The report last week was on negligence. We learned from that report that there are three types of negligence, the contractual negligence, quasi-delictual negligence, and criminal negligence. Criminal negligence is deficiency of perception or lack of foresight, the failure to foresee impending injury, thoughtlessness, or failure to use ordinary care, whereas imprudence is deficiency of action in avoiding an injury due to lack of skill. Both result to a culpable felony. Negligence can be gross or simple. It is gross if the danger to another is visible and consciously appreciated by the defendant, and it is simple if the danger is not immediate or openly visible. The degree of diligence required by law varies with the nature of the situation in which a person is placed. Negligence may be presumed if, at the time the accident occurred, the defendant was violating a regulation the purpose of which was to prevent the accident, and this was discussed at length by the reporters last week. Defenses allowed. If both the victim and the defendant were negligent, the defendant may be held liable under the doctrine of last clear chance. Another defense available is the emergency doctrine or the emergency rule, which states that due to the negligence of another, the defendant was placed in an emergency and compelled to act immediately to avoid an impending danger, and in so doing, he injured another even if his choice of action was not the wisest under the circumstances. This is similar to the exempting circumstance of accident. The emergency doctrine is the affirmative tort defense that the defendant was faced with an unexpected and sudden situation which demanded immediate response. This defense is a complete defense. If the court believes that the defendant acted reasonably during the emergency, the defendant is not liable for the accident at all. What constitutes an emergency? As stated earlier, an emergency is a sudden and unexpected situation. Unexpected is the key term. If the defendant could have predicted the situation would occur, the defense does not apply. For this reason, weather conditions, slippery roads, or sun glares are not sudden emergencies. Emergencies might be children running into the street or unexpected pedestrians. At this point, let us discuss the 1996 case of Maria Lourdes Valenzuela v. CA, GR number 115024. Facts of the case At around 2 o'clock in the morning of June 24, 1990, Plaintiff Maria Lourdes Valenzuela was driving a blue Mitsubishi Lancer with plate number FFU542 from her restaurant at Marcos Highway to her home at Palanza Street, Araneta Avenue. Before reaching A Lake Street, she noticed something was wrong with her tires. She stopped at a lighted place where there were people to verify whether she had a flat tire and to solicit help if necessary. Having been informed by the people present that her rear right tire was flat and that she couldn't reach her home in that condition, she parked along the sidewalk about one and one half feet away, put on her emergency lights, alighted from the car, and went to the rear portion to open the trunk. She was standing at the left side of the rear of her car, pointing to the tools to a man who would help her fix the tire, when suddenly she was bumped by a 1987 Mitsubishi Lancer driven by defendant Richard Lee and registered in the name of defendant Alexander Commercial, Incorporated. She was brought to the UARM Medical Memorial Center where her leg was amputated above the thigh. She was confined in the hospital for 20 days and eventually fitted with an artificial leg. Meanwhile, defendant Richard Lee denied that he was negligent. According to him, while he was in the vicinity of A Lake Street, San Juan, he was suddenly confronted with a car coming from the opposite direction traveling at about 80 km per hour with full bright lights. 
Temporarily blinded, he instinctively swerved to the right to avoid colliding with the oncoming vehicle and bumped plaintiff's car, which he did not see because it was midnight blue in color with no parking lights or early warning device and the area was poorly lighted. The court found Lee was negligent in driving his company-issued Mitsubishi Lancer. The issue was whether Valenzuela was guilty of contributory negligence in parking her car along Aurora Boulevard, the entire length of which was a no-parking zone. The court said in this case that contributory negligence is conduct on the part of the injured party, contributing as a legal cause to the harm he has suffered, which falls below the standard to which he is required to conform for his own protection. Based on the foregoing definition, the standard or act to which, according to Petitioner Lee, Valenzuela ought to have conformed for her own protection was not to park at all at any point of Aurora Boulevard, a no-parking zone. The court, however, did not agree. While the emergency rule applies to those cases in which reflective thought or the opportunity to adequately weigh a threatening situation is absent, the conduct which is required of an individual in such cases is dictated not exclusively by the suddenness of the event, which absolutely negates the thoughtful care, but by the overall nature of the circumstances. A woman driving a vehicle suddenly crippled by a flat tire on a rainy night will not be faulted for stopping at a point which is both convenient to her and which is not a hazard to other motorists. It would have been hazardous for her not to stop and assess the emergency situation simply because the entire length of Aurora Boulevard is a no-parking zone. In the instant case, Valenzuela, upon reaching that portion of Aurora Boulevard close to A Lake Street, noticed that she had a flat tire to avoid putting herself and other motorists in danger she did what was best under the circumstances under the circumstances described above valenzuela did exercise the standard reasonably dictated by the emergency and could not be considered to have contributed to the unfortunate circumstances which eventually led to the amputation of one of her lower extremities the emergency which led her to park her car on a sidewalk in Aurora Boulevard was not of her own making, and it was evident that she had taken all reasonable precautions under the circumstances. <laughs>